Let me see. I'm, I'm going to try to add you to the last. I started, I just hit it on Facebook, but for some reason, I don't see you as a host on here anymore, which is so weird because it just had you as a host. And yeah. I, I don't understand that. Because I may have to flip flop it and then <coughs> okay, so I can okay, this is a little bit easier. Did you get an invite on Instagram? Got that. Push this down. I'm still, I may have to flip the camera for Facebook so they can see you via Instagram. Um, because I'm not sure why Facebook is not allowing. But that's so weird. And you sure you don't see anything in your notifications? Hmm. And when you click on it, does it give you an option to join it? Okay. Well, just go ahead and join in on Instagram, and we'll, I'll just turn the camera for Facebook. Because I'm not sure why this is not going that way. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. All right. <coughs> Hello, hello, people from North Carolina. I see you all. I'm sorry. We're trying to get me <coughs> in Alexandria. I still have this call. We're trying to get uh, the lives going together and syncing with Instagram and Facebook. And for some reason, it's not giving us that option right now. Don't know. But anywho, we're going to get this going. I'm going to actually turn this this way. I want to turn this off so that you all can see her. When she joins in. This way. All right. That is definitely better for you all. She hasn't joined in yet, but when she does, you all will be able to see her on the screen here. So. How are we doing this evening? Hello from Georgia. I'm in Georgia. Hello. Um, so I'm gonna start this live off like we do all the other lives. If you have not subscribed, make sure that you put your email on the chat so that I could add you to it. Um Okay, here we go. So if you don't have, yeah, if you haven't put your um, email and you haven't subscribed to the chat, make sure you have it down below. Okay, here we go. All right. Turn it this way so the screen can be shown here. Ooh. What is the screen for? What am I doing? Here we go. Okay, I think that's a, a better view of it. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry, you all. This is how we kind of have it hooked up right now because Facebook is not cooperating, and I don't want to take up you all's entire evening. Um, but, yes, like I said, if you all di uh, did not drop your um, emails to the website, make sure you have them listed below so that way you can get all the subscriptions and notifications of things that we're going to be having going on. Um, as you all know, we go live each Wednesday. I didn't go live last Wednesday, but we did have a new video posted to the YouTube channel, so hopefully you all got a chance to check that out. Um, that one talks about 
customer service. It actually just packaged up our last live video in terms of what we talked about for NEMT customer service and things that your driver should be doing on the way to pick up a client, um, things that your dispatch should be doing the night before and things of that sort. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, please make sure you do so. Um, I know a lot of us have, we have, so I've talked to a lot of you all and a lot of you all have asked me in terms of certifications and credentialing for drivers. So tonight's live is going to focus on driver certification and credentialing. And we have Alexandria here with us tonight who is going to be co-hosting with me in terms of credentialing and certifications. So she offers her business, I'm sorry, I'll let her introduce her business. Go ahead, Alexandria. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, Carmen, there is a bit of a delay. Can y'all hear me okay? Put it in the chat if you all can hear, okay? Can you all hear both of us okay? Somebody let me know in the chat. Okay. okay. They can hear right. All right, so thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Like she said, my name is Alexandria, and I'm the owner of Shalom Healing Services. And we serve peace on purpose through education, health, and all things wellness to the community. So a little bit about myself. I am a licensed practical nurse. I've been a nurse for eight years. I've been in the healthcare industry giving patient care for about eight years. Um, my experience spans from pediatrics to geriatrics. I absolutely love being a nurse, and it's been very rewarding for me. Um, and although I always operate as a nurse in some capacity, I am super excited to be able to grow my company. So I know that most of you all are business owners. So go ahead and click the link in our bio and that way you can check out what all the services that we offer the community. Um, we offer a number of services. So if you have any questions or anything about any of the services that we offer, just let me know. But today I am here to discuss CPR and first aid certification. And I understand that that is required by the drivers in your industry. So I can <coughs> see you guys in comments on Facebook. So feel free to drop any questions that you have, um, comments, concerns, anything. And then when I'm done explaining everything, I will answer your questions. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. So just, just to touch on something, Alexandria, she's going to talk about the first aid, the CPR, and the AED certs at the end or towards the end. We'll touch on the PASS certification and defensive driving, which are a couple of the other certifications for NEMT. But right now, we want to focus on first aid, CPR, and ADE. So whatever questions that you all have, make sure you throw them in the chat so she can get to you all, okay? All right. Go ahead, Alexandria. Take it away. Okay. So I have a few questions to ask you guys. So in the comments, let me know. This is gonna be interactive for a little while so I can know how in depth I need to go with this information. So is anyone in here already CPR certified or first aid certified? Can you let me know in the comments? I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, and then does everyone in here know what CPR is? And I keep looking back because I can't see the front of the screen for the Instagram live, but I'm check checking to see any comments here. Okay. 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 All right. So for the CPR and first aid and AED course, there is not a renewal, but we'll get into that. You do have to recertify every two years, so we'll get into that as well. But it looks like you guys know a little bit about what I'm going to be discussing today. So for those of you who don't know, CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, and it's the physical action 
that we do as providers, okay, um, it's the physical action that we do as providers that gets the oxygen oxygenated blood through the body when someone is not breathing and their heart is not beating. So just to be clear on what we're discussing here, if somebody is not breathing, what does that necessarily mean for them? No oxygen going to the brain? Yeah. It means they're dead. So if someone is not breathing, heart's not beating, they're dead. So by you performing CPR on them, when we say pump hard and pump fast, you're not hurting them. You're actually bringing them back to life. So go for it. Um, with the first aid CPR AED course, you are going to learn how to provide first aid. CPR, CPR, and use an automated external defibrillator, which is an AED, and um, you'll be able to effectively use this device in a safe and timely manner. This course is going to teach you and prepare you to be able to handle an emergency situation um, until medical personnel arrives on the scene. Like I said before, your certification is going to be good for two years. There's not a renewal course. You will have to do your certification every two years. And you want to do your certification before it expires. The modules that we teach in this course are first aid basics, medical emergencies, injury emergencies, environmental emergencies, preventing illness and injury, adult CPR and AED use, opioid associated life-threatening emergencies, and um, also choking and EpiPen administration. Um, and with the CPR AED at first aid course, that is for adults, but you have the option as business owners, if you want to add in for um, infants or child, and then you can get the CPR and first aid for them both. The course together takes about two hours. If you add in um, the child and infant, it could be up to three hours for the full classroom course. Mm -hmm. So also the first aid, with the first aid portion, you'll learn PPE, which is protective personal equipment. And you'll also learn um, what it is and how to use standard precautions and that you will be able to use on a daily basis as you're driving or out in the field. Okay, now my company has the ability to offer these courses completely virtually, um, a blended option, which is you learn your online modules and then your skill session or evaluation is done in person. Um, and then completely classroom session, of course, everything is done right then and there in the classroom with us all together. And that's good, Alexandria, because I know that's a question that a lot of providers, they have in terms of can it be done virtually. And so that's good that you do offer it virtually. Yes. yes. All right. So um, we're going to get into <coughs> any questions that you guys may have about the courses. But um, if you go to our Facebook or Instagram page, you click the link in the bio, you can see the courses, you can purchase the courses. We accept all major forms of payment, Google Pay, Apple Pay, all of that information. The prices that you see um, are for individuals, for my business owners. If you have a group of three or more, you'll want to contact me via message or email so we can discuss um, a discounted price for a group rate. And then also, everyone who watches this live, within 24 hours of the live being broadcasted, I am offering the um, Stop Life-Threatening Bleeding course for $10. And Ooh, it is currently $40. Okay. It is a full virtual course. Um, and it's good to have. It's good to know because death from blood loss can occur in under five minutes. So with you guys transporting all different types of people with different types of diseases and ailments and 
you could be going to just a regular doctor's office and somebody's dialysis shunt bust and you have no idea what to do. So, of course, you're going to call 911 and you are going to um, wait for them to come. But while you're waiting, it would be good to know what to do to help save that person's life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We transport all different types of people on a daily basis. Um, you know, so just to be aware, a lot of our drivers or even a lot of our owners, they don't come from an industry of healthcare. You know, so just knowing what certain things look like and things to be on the lookout for is very important. So absolutely. Yes. So do you guys have any questions for me? Yes, please fill the questions. I know um, I had seen some in the NIT in the other NEMT group, and I wanted to transfer those over here, but time has gotten the best of me today, you all, because this Atlanta traffic is no joke. Um, and today was one of those days, so I do apologize. But please, if you have what questions that you have, especially for my, my owners who are just starting and just getting the businesses off the ground, I know there are several brokers that actually really require you to submit your uh, certification for not only yourself, but for your drivers as well. So are any of you in that process with those brokers? And if so, are you in need of certifications? Do you have questions about certifications? How long does it take? Um, you know, how, or how, can it be, how can it be performed? Like she said, she does do virtual and in person. Um, so what questions do you all have pertaining to that? I know here in Georgia specifically, um, Motive Care is a big one for us, and Motive Care does require you to submit some sort of certification for first aid, CPR, AED, as well as pass and defensive driving and wheelchair securement as well. So um, if you all are going after Motive Care or you all have signed up with Motive Care, that is something to, for you all to keep at the forefront because they do require that. Well, if you guys don't have any questions for me, I am available. Um, if any questions come up, just message me or email me. All the information is in our bio. Yes, absolutely. Also, Alexandra, can you drop your email <clears throat> on the Facebook chat? Are you able to drop it in the Facebook chat? Let me see. I didn't know. I know it was giving you problems with joining, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to have to get on... <clears throat> You know, YouTube or something to figure this out because I had this problem yeah, with what car. That's probably what it was because it's not letting me um, comment either. It's hmm. saying I'm a, not a group member, but it definitely accepted me into the group. And it definitely allowed me to send you the invite. So that's so weird. Yeah. I don't know. With Facebook and Instagram yeah, being I'll the same you owner, you would think it would. Email, and then you can put it in. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'll go ahead so that <clears throat> the viewers here can get the email and if you all have any questions about certification for signing up you all can reach out directly to her okay let me see. yeah and it is info at shalom healing services.com but i'm going to get her to drop it in the chat for you guys all right and I'm, I'm going to stay on but thank you so much for having me carmen i really appreciate no it. absolutely thank you um, like I said, if they, <clears throat> if they have some questions, since you are going to stay on, and I'll put them in the chat, and hopefully you can shoot an answer back. But thank you so much for joining in this evening. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to either DM you or give you a call after this. Okay, cool. Okay. Ooh. All right, now I got to figure out how to do this first. Okay. All right. You would think I'd be a little bit more tech savvy, but I'm not. I'm not, okay? All right, so thank you so much, Alexandria, for joining us tonight. That was good. That was awesome. Um, like she said, um, virtual and in person, either of the two, you all can do. So, now, when you all, let me see, let me see. What all the what are all the certifications that they'll ask for? Okay, so as I mentioned at the start of this, that was, you know, I didn't want to take too much of Alexandria's time by talking about the other certifications because she, I wanted her to get her certifications and um, what she offered out first. So 
Going into the other clarifications, we have PASS. So PASS is Passenger Assistance Safety and Sensitivity. That's PASS. Um, do under. I'm not sure what you mean, Sharon. Um, so that's PASS. So with PASS, that is the, the training for your driver, typically for an ambulatory client that, okay, for an ambulatory client that needs um, assistance to get to the vehicle. So each client that we service has a different need level, right? You may pick up a client that's going to physical therapy and it appears that nothing is wrong with them. They can get in the car by themselves. Okay, great. You may have another ambulatory client that is going to physical therapy that they have an actual pain and they cannot move and they need you to assist them to the vehicle, right? And they need you to get them into the vehicle. So everyone has a different level of ambulatory when it comes to how they can maneuver for themselves. So with passenger assistance, safety, and um, uh, sensitivity, that is a training to teach not only you but your drivers as well how to care for these, uh, these clients that are ambulatory but needs to get to their appointments. <clears throat> now, different brokers require different certifications. Different brokers don't require certifications. Some brokers simply require you to attest that your drivers have received this certain training. It just depends. That's why I always try to encourage you all for whatever brokers that you all are looking to go with, that you all also reach out to them and get that sheet of qualifications so that you can know what is it that they're requiring when signing up, okay? Um, next, we have the defensive driving. I'm sorry, before I move on from uh, past certification, do we have uh, questions about anything else? The other, uh, I'm sorry, about past? Do we have any other questions about past? Let me look at my notes here, make sure I'm not missing anything. Now, um, these pa the past certificate. Who offer those classes? Okay, so there are different organizations that offer the classes, and I'm trying for each certification that was required. I'm trying to bring on a different partners that you all can be introduced to them as a resource. So, Alexandria was our um, our partner for uh, first aid, CPR, and AD, and so uh, MedEx is one that I know of that offers past defensive driving. Um, and safety securement, I'm sorry, uh, wheelchair securement. However, there are a few other organizations as well, so I'm going to reach out to them to see who I can bring on for one of our lives so that we can, you know, have a resource for you all to reach out to. Um, but there are several. Um, MedEx is one that I personally went through because they had the bundle package at that time, but things have changed just a little bit. So I would reach out to them. Um, but that's past. Let me see. All right. Now, any any other questions about pass? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next, we have wheelchair securement. So, wheelchair securement. Um, some places offer it virtually. I'm not a believer in offering it virtually because I don't feel that you can get the true understanding of how to secure someone in a wheelchair just interacting on a screen yes you can watch a youtube video okay yes you can watch a recording however it is not the same once you have to push a 400 pound person into a vehicle okay and i'm i'm not that big of a person okay i'm just letting you know sometimes you have that restraint so you have to know how to position your body you have to know how to position your hands and you know when you may need someone else to step in to assist you with that patient with that client right so just watching a video or just watching it on YouTube, you may not always get the feel on how that's really going to go until you're out in the field doing it and practicing it yourself. So I'm a firm believer <coughs> of hands-on wheelchair securement, so much so that I got certified as a train the trainer. So what that means is I can train to get, uh, I can train you to do your wheelchair securement. So for Georgia, I can offer you hands-on wheelchair securement. Um, if you are in other places, other states, I do have a few. I have someone in Virginia. I have someone in Texas. North Carolina, I have to check with him to see if he offers it. I'm not sure. And Florida as well. King is down in Florida. So, um, so yeah. Those, in terms of wheelchair securement, that's another certification that you would have to turn, 
turn uh, into mode of care. That is um, something that they require. I know off the top of my head, those are one of the brokers that requires a wheelchair uh, securement certification for drivers, okay? Um, okay, yards now, all right. Uh, are you able, so you offer wheelchair securement training? Oh, for wheelchair pass training, okay. Um, did you find me on Facebook? Because if so, I would like to contact you to see what else that you offer. I have a few providers that need that in North Carolina. So, um, yes, please let me know. I know we, and I'm looking at two different screens. <clears throat> so, please make sure that you <laughs> push your questions in the chat because I'm talking to both of you on different screens, okay? So, I have some people on Instagram. I have some people here on Facebook. So, um Okay, yes, please, uh, Yara Snell, please contact me, either DM on Instagram or DM me on Facebook after we finish up so I can get your contact information and reach out to you for a call. Because like I said, I definitely have some people in North Carolina that need you, okay? What part of North Carolina are you located in? Um, how many people over here on Facebook do we have in North Carolina? Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, Michigan. Um, I don't have anyone in Michigan off the top of my head. I really don't. But let me reach out to, I can reach out to Lamar, who is uh, based in Texas. And um, he may have someone in Michigan. I'm not really sure. Virginia, I have someone for Virginia if you need wheelchair and pass certification. Okay. Yara Snell is in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay. All right, uh, Miss Russell, where are you located in North Carolina? Okay, yes, yeah, CCTA. That's actually a good um, a good uh, company for pass as well. Um, let me see. Okay, so if you're in North Carolina, please let me know which part of North Carolina because I have someone over here on Instagram who's in Fayetteville. Okay, um, we got Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, thank you for DMing me. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I want to reach out to you so we can get a call going. Um, okay, so... Uh, um, okay. Okay. All right. So I think we got that. So we got our questions about past, and do we have our questions about uh, uh, wheelchair securement? Do we have any questions? Okay. We got Raleigh, and we also have Greensboro, North Carolina. Yaris now. Okay. Um, so we have, so we have um, pass and we have wheelchair securement. All right, next we're gonna move on to defensive driving. Defensive driving, that training is typically, um, you can do online or you can do in person. It just depends on, you know, which organization that you're going to for that certification. Um, I'm sorry, give me one more moment. I'm trying to see what's going on with my connection over here. All right. So, yes, you can do, for defensive driving, you can typically do either in line, online or in person. It just depends. Um, not sure, you know, what you all feel more comfortable with. I will say for defensive driving, for me personally, it was either or. Um, you could do it in person or online. It really didn't matter. Um, it's more so watching the videos. Um, you, you don't go on, on road with defensive driving certification. It's more so watching the videos and taking a test. Okay. So, um, that's something to consider. Again, motive care does require that. Um, I don't think Southeast does, but again, you want to make sure you get that, that list of qualifications from the brokers that you're looking to work with so that you can know everything that they're requiring for you all to have, okay? All right. All right, so any questions on the defensive driving? 
any questions. Again, that can be done online more so. It doesn't have to be in person. Um, it just depends what you feel more comfortable with. Yeah, so the question here, um, because we have someone in the ch in the chat who is using um, CTAA for their PAS certification, and that is an organization that uh, does the PAS certification as well, and they charge $50, she said. Um, for defensive driving, uh, typically you can go to your local DMV, but the organization that I went through was MedEx. Like I said, I'm going to try to get them on a call so that they can do a, a live partner with us. And they can go over everything in terms of their packages. Their package deal has changed a bit, but um, again, they do offer everything in one. Okay. So, uh, the main four, and I, I know first aid, CPR, and AED is three different, but it's typically bundled in one. So, the main four that we have for certs that they require for your drivers to carry are the PASS, which is Passenger Assistance, Safety, and Sensitivity. And then you have um, wheelchair securement, defensive driving, and then the first aid, CPR, and AED is packaged in one. Okay, so that's four of the main specifications that your drivers are going to have to have for being vetted when it comes to um, brokers. And now, if we aren't working with brokers, Say, for instance, we're not working brokers. Take, take brokers off the table. You want your drivers to be able to know what they're doing. As I said on the live when Alexandria was on here, a lot of us come from a background that is not within the healthcare industry when we're in the NEMT field. I did not go to school for to be an NEMT business owner. I didn't. I didn't know what that meant, okay? I've learned all of this by being in the field. So... When it comes time to, you know, looking at a client who may be experiencing signs of a stroke, do you know what that looks like? Do you know when you need to step in and get a uh, re uh, call in for assistance for someone who that you can't assist because of their weight size? You know, all of those things matter and you're not going to be able to really know unless you have some type of background or some type of training on what you're doing or what it looks like, right? So, even if you aren't working with the brokers and you're doing private pay, you want to make sure that your company has a good reputation for the community that you're serving. Um, you know, it's not too hard to tell when someone doesn't know what they're doing, okay? So, their dri your clients can also get that energy from your drivers and you want to make sure that your, your company has a great reputation because you only get one time to mess it up, right? So, again, even if you aren't working with the brokers, Having these certifications for your team on file, it protects your company's reputation. It also allows your, your drivers to feel more comfortable that they are receiving these ongoing trainings from the company because you're not just throwing them behind the wheel and pushing them out to go pick up clients, right? You're not doing that. You're actually taking the time to make sure that your drivers have been trained and that they know what to do in the, in the situation for safety, okay? So... Whether you're doing broker, whether you're doing strictly private pay, these certifications are important. So take that into consideration. Um, let me see. No, okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go over some updates that we have pertaining to that NEMT girl and some things that we have rolling out. Because I have gone over the certifications now. If you all have some more questions pertaining to certifications, please let me know. Drop them in the chat. Um, also, whatever open Q&A that you have, this is open floor while I talk about the changes that I'm uh, about to discuss. Please put whatever open floor questions that you have in the chat. And I can get to them once I finish going over the updates, okay? All right. So, as we know, we go live each Wednesday. Um... We go live. I changed the time. It used to be 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now it is at 7 p.m. Okay? These lives are open. They're open to the public. Um, you don't have to be... Well, you do have to join the group, but you don't have to be um, in the special group to join it. That is going to be changing in the month of May. In the month, month of May, because we're doing... Oh, 
I'm sorry, you all. Um, my, my, I didn't, it was some banging going on outside. I don't know if my neighbors got something going on. Um, because this is moving on to our mentorship program. So um, as a lot of us, we have, I, a lot of you all know I do the 15-minute calls. Um, if you haven't booked, make sure you book. If you have any questions that you need to get off, go to my website, www.thatnemtgirl.com. You can book a free call. Whatever questions that you have, we can talk about it, okay? Um, so through doing those calls, a lot of you all have asked me about mentorship servicing. So this is what this is about. The mentorship uh, program has opened. It is on my website. <clears throat> and the reason for this is because I see that you all are getting started <clears throat> or you all are thinking about getting started, but fear is paralyzing you all. You all are not moving on to the next steps. I've had people that I have spoken to and I do a follow-up call with them in two or three weeks and they have not done the homework that I have assigned for them to do to get started. And so <clears throat> I understand, you know, we have, we have been building this relationship here for some of you all who join each week, we have been joining it. We have been building this relationship. Some of you all who I've been able to talk to on, you know, the phone and our one-on-one -on -one calls, you all need some some more assistance with this. And I and I want you all to win. Okay, I want you all to start these businesses. I want you all to win because it's so many. It's so much money in this industry and so many opportunities in this industry. And the way that we just saw how the world can get messed up, okay? Pandemic, hello? Did we not see that? No job is secure enough. You have to own something. So for you all thinking about doing it, for you all just getting started with doing it, you all need to stop letting fear shut you down, okay? And so that's why I put that mentorship program out there. So with that mentorship program, you do get a monthly call. It's basically you get something each week. You get something each week. You get a monthly call for 30 minutes. You get the newsletter monthly that has all the industry trends, all the resources that we talk about in one place. So even if you haven't started your business yet and you're looking to get some information right at your fingertips, you have that newsletter coming right to you. Um, you also get access to the lives. Because like I said, we're going to continue these lives for about three to four more weeks and then shutting it down for the public. It's going to be strictly for the mentorship program. So it's not going to be you just being able to join in and get these resources. It's going to be strictly for the program because I'm trying to help people who are serious, who are really trying to get their business going, who are really, you know, trying to get out of the rut of being stuck. I'm, I want those people. That's who I'm trying to work with. Okay. So I'm moving that to, to that platform. So you'll have the access to the live as well. You will also, if you are a local provider, we also will be having quarterly meetups. Now, I know a lot of our providers that are close by, like in Alabama or Tennessee, they don't mind coming down to Georgia, and I don't mind having you all here. But we will be doing quarterly meetups for local providers that will be able to come in person. And I think that's going to be really, really good because not only, I mean, you know how interactive we get here on the lives. However, when it comes to going in person, you can actually see the people and talk to the people in person that you've been talking to online. Okay? So... That's another thing. That's a, that's a great thing. Um, lastly, you get a worksheet that if I talk to you about something uh, on our 30-minute call at the first week of the month, you get that worksheet on the 15th of the month, right? So once you fill out that sheet, you'll be able to see, hmm, have I been doing what I said I was going to do? Have I been diligent in my process where am i stuck it's really a, a way to just see in writing where are you and you don't know the questions to ask if you're not knowing what you should be looking for right you need someone who has seen what you haven't seen before and so i am that girl for you all um so i, I really hope that you know we can get some more traction going because i want you all to win i i can't believe the amount of people that i've already had to talk with and like I said, three weeks later, still on the same phase. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's go. We can get this stuff going, okay? Um, so that's what that mentorship is about. Um, what else? What other changes do we have? Um, YouTube. So YouTube videos that are there that are already posted there, they're going to stay there. They're not being taken down. However, once the next, I have one more video that I have recorded um, two days ago. I have to edit that and get that posted. 
But once that video goes up, that's going to be the last public video for YouTube. So anything else that you'll see on YouTube is going to be a snippet about what the full video is about. So you will have access to that through the mentorship program. Don't worry though, I'm not taking any of the videos down that are already there. It's just going to be any video post the next video that I, that I post. It's not going to be posted for the public. It's just going to be posted for the group. Okay? Again, I want people that serious. That's why I'm doing this. Um... Please, you all, please don't feel any kind of way about it. But, you know, in terms of really working with people to get them started, that is my goal. You know, that is that is my personal goal. I, I really want to get people that want to either start or want to grow. And so um, I think in order to do that, you all have to have some type of accountability to move forward. You know, in anything that we do, we got to be held accountable. If you say you want to go to the gym three times a week, you got to have somebody say, okay, what we doing? You in the gym? What time? We, you know, we need that extra push. We just do. So, I am here for that push. Um, let me see. We got some questions. Um, no, my mentorship program is not just for Georgia. Nothing that I offer is just for Georgia. Um, I have, like I said, I have colleagues in all different states. Well, not all different states, but many of the states that any EMT providers come from. And if I don't have a colleague in that state, I'm pretty sure I could find a colleague that has a colleague in that state. Um, but the things that I'm offering and the resources that I give out are not just for Georgia either. So, for example, Alexandria, who was just on earlier today for her first aid, CPR, and AED, AED training. She's not just for Georgia. She could train anybody else, anywhere. Why? Because she can offer the training virtually. You know, so... No one, anything that I'm offering is not just for Georgia. Um, there are certain things, certain questions. For example, in Georgia, we cannot bill Medicaid directly. In California, they can. So when it comes to certain things in terms of getting signed up to be in Medicaid billing directly, I wouldn't have those answers for you because I'm not in the state that allows that. But I do have somebody that is in California that will be able to offer you the steps on what to do to how to get that certification for Medicaid. Um, okay, Alexandria says she does travel for her business, the first aid, CPR, and AED. So it's not limited, okay? She does travel. So again, if you all need those certs, please reach out to her. I put her email here in the chat. Um, and also, like I said, <clears throat> because a lot of you, I, I keep mentioning motive care, but a lot of you um, have asked about motive care, and motive care does require those certifications. So please keep that in mind, all right? Also, you want to plan for it in your budget, as I always talk about budget, you want to plan for it in your budget, depending on how many drivers, when you're sending your paperwork over for, for your um, applications to be reviewed or onboarded, you need to, whatever driver you have on the application has to have those certifications. So if you put five drivers on there, all five drivers have to have those certifications, okay? So just keep that in mind starting off. Now, if you have five drivers start, starting off, that's a great thing. No, no push there. But if you don't have five drivers to start off, for real, for real, don't put that on the application because you're going to have to prove that you have that certification for all five drivers. Okay. Um, vehicles. Oh, hey, Nay. Actually, there is someone in Chesterfield. He's a provider um, in Virginia. I'm going to reach out to him to see um, where he did defensive driving, if he did his in person, if he did his virtual. I'm not sure, but he is in Chesterfield. Um, Keith, that's his name. I'll reach out to him for you. Please remind me. Send me a DM so I can check out for him. No problem. Um, let me see. Uh, Sandra, it sounds like we need to book a call, baby. <laughs> it sounds like we need to book a call. Please go on the site right now and book one, okay? Um, like I said, you can do a quick 15-minute call. It's free. No, no charge to you. We can just talk it out. But the vehicle, um, I always tell you all, if you can, go out and, you know, purchase it outright. That's great, um, because you don't have that extra overhead. Um, you, you keep more ROI, that's the, that's the favorite acronym, return on investment. You keep more money in-house by doing that. 
But again, you want to make sure that the vehicle is not too old, doesn't have too many mechanical issues, or has had too much damage or any damage in the past for that matter, because then you come in out the pocket with a lot of money for repairs, and you don't want that either, right? That's going to be something that takes more money out of your pocket. So if you can find a decent used vehicle that is a wheelchair van that you can pay for out of pocket in full, go that route. Um, if not, with financing, you know, like I say uh, on the video about two weeks ago, I said, please go to your banks. Go to your banks to try to get the funding for the, um, or get the, get the uh, financing for the loan because you will get a higher interest rate at the dealership. And I, and I don't advise anyone right now really to purchase a vehicle. I will try to wait until about third quarter of this year with all that's going on right now with the finances and stuff and the banks of the world, I would try to try to calm it down and wait till about third quarter to see what they do. Um, let me see. Yes, Rondolin, Medex, M-E-D-E-X. Almost. Just take the, e, the I out and it's an E. But yes, they do offer a bundle deal. Again, I don't know. They, they The price has changed. I don't know what the price is. But they do offer those four into one. Okay. Um, and Lamar from Medex, I'm going to try to get him on a call with us one week because he's a great resource for you all to talk with in terms of um, what they offer. They offer a whole bunch of stuff over there at Medex. So I want to get him on a call so he can let you all know. And I think we'll have to maybe break it up into two calls because... The certifications are one thing, and then they also offer, um, is it business in a box? No. I forgot the name of their software, but they have a software, and basically it's all of the things that you need in one place for day-to-day -day operations. But I don't want to chop it up and screw it up, so I'll let him come on and talk about it, okay? Um, again... What questions do we have? Because we are dwindling down, and we may wrap this up a little early tonight, you guys. Um, but what questions do we have? It's an open floor right now. And Sandra, when you say you're stuck on policy and procedure, what do you mean? Do you mean like, day-to-day -day operation policy and procedure or like a policy and procedure for your drivers no problem Rondolin. and if you need a contact for medex uh, you let me know and i can send that to you as well um also i know i have i'm not merley is merley on the call tonight if you are, please drop down in the chat. Um, I actually needed to reach out to you this week to check in about your insurance. I don't know. But Merle, if you're in the chat uh, or in the call, let me know. Um, anyone in Florida that is in need of insurance? Anyone in Florida? I know we had someone in Florida earlier, but they, I, don't, I don't know if they're still on. Um... Okay. Sandra, and yes, to that point, you do. You do. You need some type of policy and procedure in place. Um, also, when you're applying for the brokers, they will ask you about certain questions about your policy and procedure on your day-to-day your day -day business, such, such as how your drivers are trained, you know, hours of operation, if you have a, an after-hours um, number that they can get in contact with for emergency purposes. Say, for instance, they have your business may run from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., right? And they had a last-minute trip come in, and they have a 5 a.m. pickup time, and they need to see if your company can take it. Well, if you close at 6, then who can they call after 6 to ask about taking a trip early in the morning the next day? Right? So what's your policy or procedure for after, after hours business, you know? So things like that, you do need to have policy and procedure in place before you start because those are going to be questions that you're going to be asked once you apply for a broker or you go out to start marketing your business. Um, 
again, broker and private pay is totally different. Um, so I try to, you know, emphasize that. But, um, yes. Uh, Sharon, you can message me and I can get to you on that. I actually have a company for you here in Georgia. Um, Colorado. Okay, hi, Jay. Colorado, all right. I want to visit Colorado. I've never been out there, but I hear it's nice. Um, do you have a, a template for policy procedure? So, I have the, so in terms of policy procedure, um, yes and no. I have a driver policy procedure, and then I have the employee handbook. But in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, no, that is a customizable option, but it's not something that's just a template because I have to know certain things about your business to be able to generate that for you. So, no, unfortunately, I don't have a template for that. Okay. Uh, let me see. What questions we got? We got about... Five more minutes before I'm logging out of here. So, what questions do we have? Oh, and I'm sorry. I, I, I know I talked about, let me go back. I know I talked about the mentorship program, but there are two options. Um, and I have a video that I'm going to post that explains more in terms of how this works. But um, there are two options if you are, are still on the fence. Like, I know I have some people here that have not started yet, but are thinking about starting so, uh, give me one second because my computer is acting some type of way right now. It's... Okay. Oh, I think my computer is a little too hot. All right, let me try to pull up my phone. Let me see, we got some new questions down here. Oh, no, it's 85 in Colorado today, but it's going to snow on Saturday. Oh, no. Uh, maybe I don't want to come there right now. Maybe I'll wait till the winter. <laughs> maybe I'll wait. Because uh, we're, not, we're not having those snow problems right now. I don't think I've seen snow in a long time since I, I lived in Baltimore. Uh, okay, so I'm able to go on my phone and pull it up because I, I can't remember everything off the top of my head. But All right, so for those who are still in the planning phase, this is the mentorship program for you all. Um, you'll have the newsletter and then the video playback um, access and then and that's 17 and then for that's 17 per month i'm sorry um and then for more of the the one-on-one -on -one, where you get more out of it you get like i said you get the one-on-one -on -one call the monthly newsletter the live call we like i said we have three or four more of these and then we try to get down exclusively for the mentorship program um you get the monthly worksheet the video playback, and then the quarterly in-person meetup, and that is 39 a month. And so you will log on to the website and sign up there. Now, Sandra, like I was saying, for um, the day-to-day -day operations, no, but if you go on to the site, you'll see for the employee template, you'll see that. And then you'll see... Uh, the transportation agreement but it's not like the policy and procedure for day-to-day -day operations if that makes sense so hope hopefully that answers your question um rondolin which part of georgia are you located in um because that's gonna dictate my answer
Okay. Rondolin. Rondolin and then Sandra. Rondolin, um, you're in Atlanta. So to answer your question, is Atlanta saturated? Yes. Not going to lie to you. Um, Atlanta is definitely saturated. Um, and here's why Atlanta is saturated. Inner city of Atlanta and inner Atlanta, a lot of the um, clients that you would reach out to for transport if you were trying to do private pay, um, a lot of them utilize their services through the organizations in Atlanta, through Medicaid, Medicare, um, or through senior services. There are a lot of senior services throughout the city of Atlanta where they can get their rides um, picked up at a cheaper rate or at a free rate, right? Um, typically, you will want to get contracted with a facility versus going out for different clients. You want to get a contract with the facility so that you can get those clients and the facility is paying for it, that's on them, right? Now, when it comes to the rural areas of Georgia, when you talk about Locust Grove, uh, Macon, um, even McDonough, Douglasville, things like that, you know, there is not a lot, of, not as much competition in those areas. So um, I will focus on more of the rural areas for private pay. Oh, Sandra, Savannah, that's where you are? Oh, baby, y'all need people out there. You, you might want to start your business like yesterday. <laughs> They got providers coming from Atlanta down to Savannah to pick people up in wheelchairs. So trust me, you you might want to start. Oh, 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 you were just saying it on a switch. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay, making a suggestion. Um, but yes, I would say more of the rural areas um, to focus on for private pay. Now, if you're doing broker pay, you can definitely do broker in, in, in the city of Atlanta. The rates aren't going to be that great, but the volume will be there. If you can diversify your portfolio and have, you know, the broker rates and then have private pay mixed in, you'll be good to go. Um, but if you're talking about for private pay, I will focus on the facilities in the rural areas. Um, oh, okay, your mom is there. Um, so, okay, so Sandra, and please let me know if that helps you, Rhonda. Um, okay, Sandra says, uh, transportation agreement like a service agreement. Yes, yes, that is a service agreement for you at a private facility. If you are looking to, um, you know, like I just told uh, Ron, you're looking to get a contract directly with the facility, directly with the rehab center, whatever. That is a template that you will use for your contract with them because you're going to have to have some type of contract in place so that you can know how your business is operating there, what you're getting paid there. It's signed off on. Everyone is all on one page, okay? So you have to have that contract in place, have to, because if not, you won't get paid. Your money will be played with, your clients will be played with, your time will be played with, okay? Please don't get to a facility and try to get a contract with them and you don't have that template because you need something to have them sign off on, for sure. For sure, for sure. Okay. No, no problem, Riley, no problem at all. I like to, I try to be honest and transparent with people when it comes to this industry, so, um, you know, yeah. It's not, it's... You don't want someone to lie to you about anything. You know, yes, it is a, a tough market in Atlanta for private pay. But can you do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Sandra, yes, she would just go under uh, NEMT documents and it's uh, the NEMT transportation agreement. Oh, no problem. Thank you. I appreciate you for joining in. Um, and that actually, that wraps up the time. We got like 30 seconds, so I got kicked off. Um, but I thank you all for joining in tonight. As always, um, like I said, I have another video I'll be posting once I get it edited, hopefully between tonight and tomorrow, and it'll be on YouTube. Um, if, any questions that you all have, please send me an email or put them in the comments. Uh, no, please don't put the questions in the comments because I won't see them really after the live in so uh send them in the email please um thank you alexandria if you're still listening thank you so much for joining in with us this evening i truly truly appreciate it um like y'all like i said if you all need that information her email is still in the in the comments i believe once i post the playback it'll still be in the comments and also like she said she has some free stuff not free stuff but some cheap stuff for you all it was a ten dollars 
You can see the certification she's doing for ten dollars just because you are on the live within twenty four hours. So please make sure you follow up with her for that, okay? Um, also, if you don't have your emails in here, put your emails in here so that you can get the updates. All right. Don't want you all to get missed. Like I said, things are changing in the next month. So for you all who have been with me since the top of the year, I don't want you all to miss anything, okay? Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your night. I appreciate you all for watching, and I will see you all next week. Oh, I don't know what the topic is going to be for next week, okay? I'm going to see if we're going to keep going with credentialing and certifications, which we may because it keeps the ball rolling. Um, I may try to bring someone on for pass or for... Um, uh, wheelchair securement, we'll talk about that. Um, but yes, please let me know what you all would like to talk about next week. Put it in the chat, put it in the DMs, put it in my emails, whatever. I just need to know so I can get some more content going for you all, okay? All right, I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.